Hello, I'm Alexa. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're not only going to be going over how to make low fidelity digital wireframes, but also why they're an important part of the product design process. I was so sick for the last week. I still think I sound congested, so here we go. If you're new to my channel, well, welcome. I'm a San Francisco-based digital product designer, and yes, that is the same thing as being a UX designer, but here in the Bay Area, we use the term product design. I've also made a video about that. Anyway, today we're talking about digital wireframes, because we are making digital products after all, and these paper sketches have got to make their way onto the computer at some point, right? But before we jump onto the computer, I wanted to start by talking about why designing low fidelity digital wireframes are an important part in the design process. It's actually quite simple. Once we start to add color, typography, and images, our products start to look really real. So keeping wireframes low fidelity earlier on is going to help us gather higher quality feedback from stakeholders without them getting too distracted. Especially at a big tech company like mine where the whole team is very familiar with our design system and our brand, if I show work that's too final, I could easily get feedback that I'm just not looking for. This can be a huge distraction and lead to a lot of wasted time. Similarly, if you're working with a brand new company who hasn't established these patterns yet, showing designs that look too high fidelity can be a huge distraction when you're showing your work to high level stakeholders like directors, VPs, and CEOs who care deeply about their products, brand, and image. Humans in general are very visually sensitive. Our brains light up in different ways when we see things like color or human faces. It's easy to get distracted. So in order to gather the proper feedback that you need to get about user flow, leave out that detail for this stage in the design process. Context aside, let's begin this demonstration by watching me turn these paper sketches into low fidelity digital wireframes. To start, you will need your sketches. I worked on these prior to this video. Uh, you'll want a computer, your design software of choice, and maybe your phone to use as a camera. For this demo, I've designed a few screens for this imaginary flower company I invented called Crushin' It. Crushin' It allows people to send flowers to their crushes on the go. I know, great idea, someone fund me. So before recording this video, I spent some time sketching out one of the main user flows, which is customizing the bouquet of flowers. To begin, take a photo of your sketches and upload them onto the computer. When I was first starting out, I liked to do this so I could draw over my sketches and get the alignment right. It used to help me work a lot faster. Today though, I don't do this anymore. So for this demo, I'm not actually going to draw on top of my sketches. But if you are starting out, this could be something that's useful. All right, let's get started. So this is my first time doing any sort of demonstration and I found myself having kind of a hard time t trying to um, create the designs live while speaking about it. Um, it just wasn't flowing very well. And I think there's actually a lot of work that goes into preparing something like that. And I just need to practice. So instead, I thought it'd be interesting if um, I created the final designed wireframes and I will go into detail at every stage um, in the wireframes that I made and that will help, um, hopefully help you better understand how I went from nothing to this, okay? So, um, you'll notice that I'm in Sketch. This is the software that I use to design. Uh, I've been using Sketch for probably about three years. Uh, it's super easy to, to learn and, or at least I found it super easy to learn. And um, if you're just starting out, um, just know that there will be some sort of learning curve, but uh, the more repetition that you do, the better you'll get at it. Um, I also think that using quick keys is really important. It's a huge part of my process. So if you don't know the quick keys in Sketch, I would also learn those. I'll try to talk about a little bit more about that while I go through this design too. So. To start off, um, I needed to create, this is, I'm calling this like the key. You'll see over here in my layers, I've grouped them together. Um, so something that I always start out with, you'll notice these wireframes are blue. I like making my blue versus gray, but you can, you know, do either. You want to choose one color, a base color, um, and that's this color here. Uh, I've created a couple other uh, shades of this blue. Um, so I can show contrast, like we talked about uh, in the other part of my video. So um, let's move this over for just a second here. So how did I do this? So what I usually do is I start out by, I create this, um, I create this shape for this base layer. 
Um, you know, I just came in here to the color palette, chose a blue, and came out. And then I copied it. I'm holding Shift and Option on a Mac computer, so I can copy it. Um, and then I just keep copying it down, like so. And I just change the opacity of each of these shapes so that um, it still is the same sh uh, shade of blue, it's just at different opacity levels. So for example, this one's at 100. You'll see here, I'll click the next one. I'm gonna click the number eight on my keyboard. That's gonna bring it down to 80%. You can see it changed over here. This one's gonna be 60, 40, and 20. And then after that would be just solid white. Um, so that's how I get these colors. However, since it's just changing the opacity, um, we're not quite there yet. You'll see if I start to layer these on top of each other, it starts to get a little messy, right? Which is not what we want. So in order to create this, um, this color palette, what I did, here, we'll, call, we'll move this over again. Move this over, um, copy over your shape, duplicate it, duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And what I did was I selected this second shape here, um, and then I went over here and clicked this eyedropper tool, and I went like that, and now this color, now this rectangle is this color, not the opacity. So you'll see this is at 100%, while well, this is at 80. So I basically just did that for all of these shapes, like this, um, all the way down, and then that's what created this palette right here. Okay. So I'm going to delete these. There we go. Let's move the key over. Usually when I make wireframes, I also an like use an um, annotations to explain some things. Uh, and I usually use like a contrasting color, so I use pink here. Um, but I needed an arrow to show uh, how the thing was going to flow together. So I downloaded this arrow from the Noun Project. It's a really cool uh, icon company, I guess. <laughs> you can purchase icons that you need for your actual projects there. Um, I just downloaded it for free, and this is why I have this uh, like Creative Commons uh, copyright thing here. So this is the person who created this icon for me. So I just wanted to include that in here too because um, I didn't actually buy this icon. I'm noticing my computer is a little bit loud right now. Hopefully it's not going to be too loud in the video, so apologize if so. This is my first time doing this. Alright, let's move on. So, if you'll remember back to my sketches, I... Uh, I'm just creating this super simple flow for designing part of the customization flow for designing a bouquet of flowers. Um, so the very first screen in the wireframes I wanted to create was maybe, you know maybe something that would be representative of a home page. I'm not designing the home page because that's you know in this example perhaps like not what I'm looking for feedback on. And so I just created this screen this this um, artboard that kind of looked like a, like a screen. These sort of represent three buttons, and then the third button is like selected in some sort of way, you know, it's contrasted. And so that's sort of trying to indicate that with this arrow, you like someone selected option three, and then they were brought to this wireframe here. So I like to do stuff like that because, again, we want to be really in control of the feedback we're gathering, and I just I don't want feedback on this home page. So I um, I, I'm not going to design it right now. So on this second page here, you'll notice, um, sorry, this is, you'll see I have these annotations um, all grouped together on the top layer. I'm going to lock this so it doesn't, I don't have that hover issue. Okay, we're zoom, zooming back in. Um, okay, so what I, what I did to create this was um, I created an artboard. Uh, so if you click the letter A, on your keyboard, you'll open the, the artboard panel. Uh, I was creating this as if it was made for an Apple iPhone uh, 8. So what you do is you just you're gonna select that. You'll see it created a new layer for me over here. That's exactly what I did at the beginning. I'm gonna undo that. Come back here. So that's how you can get the proper uh, sizes for your screens, which is super cool. Um, they have all that detailed in here as well. Um, and there's a drop down here if you want different types of sizes. So I created that artboard. And then I just started creating, uh, basically just started creating rectangles in circles and started to piece together uh, the sketches that I had in a more digital sort of way. So if you click the R um, key on your keyboard, you'll open up this rectangle tool. And this is what you can use to 
um, yeah, start creating these rectangles. Okay, what I would do, I, was, I would create that rectangle, and then I'm gonna go over here and click the eyedropper tool and select one of the colors. Um, so again, you wanna be selecting these to help determine, based, on, based off of how you need to contrast it against other elements. This color seemed to work well because I knew I was going to have other elements on top of it. And so, um, and then I just would move it into place like so, you know, sort of like that, and then move it up. Um, so I did that basically for this whole screen, right? So you'll notice here that I have four sections, one, two, three, four. Um, the first is this navigation section at the top. It includes uh, what will be some sort of like back link. Um, and then there are these three circles here that are going to represent icons. Um, you'll notice up here, I sort of indicated that with some annotations. They're supposed to be buttons that represent attributes, the color, type, and an extra. So if you imagine like for, you know, customizing a bouquet, it's like filtering um, the flowers by color um, or choosing the flowers by type of flower or any sort of extra thing you'd want to purchase to add to the bouquet, maybe um, a ribbon or a balloon, I don't know, those sorts of things. So these icons, uh, these are supposed to be representative icons and up here I'm describing um, in really like not a lot of words what they could be. Uh, so that when I'm showing these designs to someone, uh, they can kind of get that general idea when I'm explaining it. You also notice that I have the word back here. I have a very general icon uh, for the back. I'm actually using the same icon that I used here. Uh, that's because, again, I, I, don't, like, I don't need to think about icons yet. Um, I don't need to think about language a lot yet either. I want it to be as general as possible so that we can focus on the flow. So um, I usually use all caps to show to represent language too because I often don't use all caps in my designs in the final designed uh, product. And so this makes it just continue to make it look more low fidelity. So that's the top layer. This middle one is the viewport. You also notice over here, um, I think it's super important to organize your layers as much as possible. I group things a lot once I'm done so that it can move around the elements that I need uh, together, right? So here we have nav, you can see down here, this is the viewport. This is where once you start to customize and choose your flowers for your bouquet, you would start to see it in this section, like a preview. The third is this demo section right here, there it is. Um, so I was sort of imagining for this section, it could be where you start to write like a note maybe. So that's where you see this, it's like write dot dot dot. This is again just trying to show the general idea of it. Um, if I was an actual composer, there, it would not look like this. I'm not even sure the contrast is quite right, but because of the um, constraints I had with my color palette, uh, this seemed like it was at least the right contrast to distinguish it um, and call it out as something different than the viewport area here. Okay, and then the fourth is, um, I have I labeled it as action. Again, super, super like general idea here. So I was thinking, you know, maybe as you start to add um, more flowers to your bouquet, the price can be shown here. So you can start to see like how much money you're going to spend on this bouquet of flowers. And then I don't, again, I don't know what the, the word is that we're going to use, but there should be some sort of action. So I think this will be like the action bar and whatever, whatever needs to happen next, like they will hit this button to move on to the next step. So that was the screen. And then you'll see, um, I wanted to start to show some examples for what would happen um, once they select one of these three icons. So first we'll start with color. So if they select the color um, icon, then uh, they would see something like this. So I sort of wanted to show a little bit of action, like what's gonna happen, how did like, you know, I was looking at um, screen one versus screen two at first and I was like, you know, without this one, let's just like delete this. Is it clear how we got from here to here? Um, maybe, maybe not so much. So I included this, um, this O2 color A artboard um, to show that this element is gonna come up from the bottom that's where you see these arrows, come up from the bottom and layer on top of the initial screen, this one. So let's see here, I can break it down into the layers for you. So this is the color selector. You'll see I can toggle that on and off. I'm using these arrows again with pink to contrast it. Um, I created a, a background with our dark blue, or with one of the, blue um, the blues from our key. 
and I put it at 90% this time because I wanted it to be see-through. And then underneath that is the actual background of the UI from the previous screen. And again, everything is layered nicely so I can move things around if I need to. Okay. And then on the O2 Color B artboard, you'll see I've, um, again, just sort of showing the general idea of what I was imagining would happen um, in this next screen. So you click the color icon at the top, this will um, this uh, this uh, section would slide up, and then you'd see something like this. Um, if you know me, you know I love Instagram and Instagram stories. So this was definitely inspired by that UI. If you have ever made a story before on Instagram, you know that there are different ways that you can um, sort of like add different elements into your the story that you're creating. So this looks kind of like that. <laughs> um, so what I was thinking with this one was that like there could be this section at the top where maybe you select um, a color and kind of um, like these would be different colors that could be like flowers and so you select one of those and it would maybe filter the list below what you'd see because um, there are lots of different flowers out there uh, type wise but maybe you want to just see the same um, flowers of the same color so this element would be uh, this element would dictate what you would see underneath so you see here, I uh, annotated that again. It says choose color to filter. And then below it says shows flower option with color attribute. Below that, I wanted to show the example for if they selected the type or extra attribute. And so the same sort of sliding thing would happen um, where this would slide up. Didn't need to show that again, but um, I wanted to, uh, I still needed to show that this screen is slightly different than the color one because there's no filter at the top. So basically what I was thinking with this um, project was that if they selected type or extra, the same UI would show up, would slide up. Um, it would just be these elements that you would maybe select and would add to your bouquet. They would be different depending on if you put, selected type or extra. If you selected type, you would probably see different types of flowers all here that you could select, like sunflowers, roses, um, those sorts of things. And then if it was extra, maybe you'd see a bow or a balloon or a sticker, stuff like that. And then again, I annotated that here on the on the right. After that is the last screen. Basically with this screen, I basically just copied this artboard. If you um, select the artboard on the left here in hold option and move, um, you can copy the artboard over. What I basically did was just copy this artboard, put it over here, lab uh, moved it up here, labeled it 4, 04, and then I added this element in the middle here because I wanted to show that um, once you started selecting these icons and adding, basically adding flowers to your bouquet, that you would start to see an updated uh, bouquet right here in the center. And there we have it, low fidelity digital wireframes. I can't emphasize enough the importance of this stage in the design process. It can be so tempting to add color and typography and images and make the thing look really real, but why you need this step is so important. You will save yourself a lot of time when you can take control of the conversation and focus the feedback on for what you need. If you have any questions at all, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. That is it for today. I made it through. Next week, I won't be sick, that's the plan. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of designing low fidelity digital wireframes. I love this part of the design process because I love how it allows us to really focus in on the problem as well as um, really focus in on what the important questions are in this stage in the design process. So if you like me and you like my videos, you should totally be a subscriber because I've got so many more videos like this coming your way and I can't wait to share them with you. So. That is all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>